Hello and welcome back everyone to Ultimate Animal Dreadnoughts playing as the Spanish Empire as we are in the process of getting everything sorted for our next conquest. Now, <laughs> I almost forgot to record today. Unfortunately, my new schedule is incredibly, incredibly uh, weird to say the least. I'm not used to going in at 2 p.m. On, on days. Like, I'm just not used to it at all. But here we are. I, I remembered to record, and we are currently working on... Uh, so, research-wise, we're focusing on trying to get to 21-inch torpedoes as quickly as possible so that we can make sure that we have the beginnings of heavyweight torpedoes available to us. We're also getting our first two dreadnoughts built these will be the first th these will probably be the only two dreadnoughts that we build initially um and then we're also building a couple scout cruisers uh for our main fleet as well um we probably won't build any more dreadnoughts but if i can manage it i will um but we definitely need to manage our income properly to make sure we're not stretching ourselves but we do need some heavier tonnage so <clears throat> so how are you guys doing the new job is progressing well um the job is insanely easy i've done this kind of stuff before so it was like yeah i literally had f four hours of training and i was like oh okay yeah i've done this before like we're good <laughs> like just kind of fell into place and uh had a good good thing going pretty quick so also meeting uh the management at the location has gone well so far uh actually kind of funny one of the one of the uh supervisors actually lives relatively close to me so it was like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. you're you're from my you're from my neck of the woods so we're cool <laughs> all right so politics wise so we are halfway to our next war with the italians but I also want to start poking the Japanese. We also want to test out... Um, we, we want to see if we can actually swap government types sooner rather than later. Um, we've already had our elections, so unfortunately our unrest went to zero, so we had to build the uh, unrest back up. So unfortunately we're just going to have to kind of push forward and see if we can swap governments unfortunately this is the problem when you're doing well and you're actually maintaining things in a concise and, and precise manner it's actually hard to swap government types um the easiest way and it's a little gamey but the easiest way to do it is actually to fail naval invasions um and you can build up uh, quite a bit of unrest very quickly so it's kind of the way we're gonna have to go with it now, we're not going to poke the Italians at all. We're just going to kind of... Uh, we, we need to finish building out the rest of our fleet. So we're not going to poke the Italians at all. Um, we're just going to focus on building our ships. Um, unfortunately, I think our economy... I think our GDP growth fucking decreased again. Which is really annoying. But hey, what can you do? The nationalists suck. <laughs> they suck hard, unfortunately. Let's actually let's see what we're at. We were close to 7% last time. Let's actually give it a look real quick. Um, counter offer because i don't want to sacrifice that i don't want to sacrifice the unrest uh okay we're relatively close to where we were at before so that's good oh we can actually turn this down finally so let's go ahead and do that so that's good oh i forgot to continue building this whoops okay um let's get something out of this here we'll build six months worth of stuff and then Budget wise, let's start adjusting things a little bit. So we'll go down to 
for this and then crew training on we can't really lower our crew training we like we have to kind of maintain 50 percent um because we need to be able to train up our crews that we already have on top of being able to uh on top of being able to recruit people into the navy it, just in general so unfortunately we can't really lower that but we can lower the uh tech budget a little bit um we're already very advanced so we're ahead of the game in that regard so we should be fine and with fifty-three thousand ton max shipyard size we're doing pretty well in that regard so i don't think we have too much to worry about in that regard um, I don't see us building anything that big. I think the biggest we'll go is probably about 45,000. And I guess that's actually the advantage of going smaller is we actually use less overall crew. So it's definitely an advantage for us. Um, so it looks like the French and the Italians are absolutely getting blasted. Oh my lord, what's going on? So who the yeah, the Italians are at war with fucking everybody. Um and the French are at war with quite a few people. So the French are definitely not doing too hot. Actually, they're getting in oh no. <laughs> oh no, France. Oh, the Germans are pushing into northern France and they're oh no uh but the uh the french are pushing into northern italy which it isn't really a trade because no oil versus oil and 8.7 billion to 4.7 billion so they're definitely losing out on that but the italians they're they're losing ground to the french um all right we got seven months on 19 inch torpedoes all right cool all right, so yeah, we're we're just gonna push forward. Uh, we just need to get the ships ready to actually invade. Our goal again is to take the uh, the territories that are formerly known as Naples slash Aragon. So if you go back to the uh, pre Iberian wedding era, which it, the Iberian wedding I believe happened back in the I want to say it was the late fourteen hundreds. Um, the nation of Aragon, which, uh, if you don't know, uh, Spain was split into three, right, right before the, f the, the conclusion of the Reconquista, uh, you had, uh, Aragon, Castile, and Leon, and, um, Castile and Leon end up merging much earlier than Castile and Aragon. Aragon and Castile end up merging after their crowns, uh, basically, uh, I believe it was the Spanish, if I remember correctly, the Spanish had a male heir, the Aragonese had a female heir, and so they just merged together because they were one and the same people for the most part. Um, and so they merged the crowns after that, and then the um, and then later you would have the uh, Spanish Habsburgs, which would control. A good chunk of this and they would control up here in belgium and so on and so forth so they're the spanish habergs were actually probably the the pinnacle of spanish power um early on eventually you would see them actually be the ones to establish um the uh colonies also known as new spain um which then would eventually break out into their component parts you know Colombia, Venezuela, Mexico, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was actually kind of funny. There was a map that um, that's been floating around on Twitter that a lot of people have been screeching about. Um, and this map was in regard to it was uh, the Spanish imperial holdings. And a bunch of people were freaking out, like, oh, Spain never held that, Spain never held that, et cetera, et cetera. And what was actually really funny was, is like, eh, yeah, they might not have directly held it, but did they hold significant influence over it? <laughs> like, for example, there was some, uh, somebody referenced Brazil specifically, and I'm like, eh, well, the Portuguese crown basically was a, was a subservient partner to the Spanish for a while until they signed their alliance with the Brits, like... 
Like it was, it wasn't until the Brits uh, came in and interceded on the Portuguese behalf that the Spanish actually had somebody to check them. So it's like eh, direct control influence. You know, ask the British how that. You know how that works. <laughs> ask the ask the French how that works. You know, it's like. Eh. Control is control, whether it's direct or indirect. I also just love how much of a spaz Twitter's been recently with uh, uh, the elections in uh, Germany and Austria as of late. Um, the uh, IFD, or uh, Alternative for Deutschland, um, firmly... Uh, pushing out the greens in Thuringia, Saxony, and um, there was another state, I forget which one, but there was another state where they, oh, Brandenburg, um, basically pushing the greens out of the Bundesrat, and the, uh, the, the Europhiles are not happy about this, and it's funny because I'm like, <laughs> get fucked nerds. Um, and then Austria, same, basically same thing. The, the greens, uh, version, uh, or the, the Austrian version of the green party in Germany, uh, got pushed out, uh, and the Austrians are, are firmly rejecting the bullshit now. And it's like, ah, oh, yes, yes. I love it. I love it. We love watching, we love watching the spaz, uh, spaz train just continue spurging as they, uh, as they get pushed out of political power. It's always fun. Also, in regards to uh, Naval Arms Race, I, I know I've said it before, but I'm just gonna reiterate it for this video as well. I will be playing a series with naval arms race enabled um it will just be later on after this series um unless you guys would like to see me play the other nations that we haven't played yet before going into the naval arms race if you guys would prefer me to finish playing out all the nations and kind of doing doing what i would do with those nations um let me know i would like to be able to uh do what you guys like, you know. I'm, I might I might take some of your suggestions and throw them in the bin, but but I'm I'm a reasonable host. I'm a reasonable host. So we've got ten months until the first two dreadnoughts build, and those will give a significant increase to our tonnage to be able to do naval invasions. Um, those will actually give us the ability to probably guarantee our taking of Sardinia and Sicily. So that's going to be a good situation. And I kept, I keep forgetting to poke the Japanese. I need to remember to do that because the Japanese are going to be important to take. Um, I actually was uh, doing some research and apparently the Japanese home islands, um, even though they will, they never have oil, they, they, they don't have any strategic value in the regard of oil and whatnot. Just the fact that they are so isolated from everything else. Island provinces in this game are incredibly profitable. Um, I was actually talking with somebody uh, that actually basically did an island hopping playthrough um where they did nothing but uh, basically focus on taking islands and like for example if you guys remember in the russia campaign i believe yes the russia campaign where some of these pacific islands were you know four billion five billion income uh per uh basically at at in the late game when these start building up hardcore and because of their isolation and their and their removal from the general areas that fighting occurs these these islands can actually be a great help for your late game income um same thing for like america and the caribbean and um and japan you know taking the philippines and all these territories down here and so on and so forth all of these islands become incredibly valuable especially in the late game so uh taking japan is actually going to be 
you know, definitely on the list of things that we need to do in order to really solidify our income. Uh, because we need to rely on mass rather than relying on quality because, well, unfortunately, uh, until we change our government, we really can't get anything quantitative. Uh, so it's kind of annoying. So five months on our scout cruisers. Um, we probably won't build too many of them initially because, again, we're trying to retain forces. We're trying to maintain the troops that we have available um, or the, the ships that we have available, I should say. <laughs> we're trying to maintain them as long as possible because the longer we're able to maintain certain forces, the better off we're going to be in general. We also need to start focusing a little bit on destroyers. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, no. I'll happily take that. Thank you. Um, where are we at destroyer-wise? We're at 1,000 tons. If I remember correctly, it's 1,100 tons for our destroyer one design. Let me just check real quick. Yeah, it's 1100. Okay, so as soon as we're able to get to 1100, we will go ahead and we will build these out. And and these are gonna be relatively lighter destroyers. They're not gonna be too well armed, unfortunately. Well, actually, no, we get, we get armed towers on these. Oh, okay. Well, they're gonna be better armed than I was uh, expecting to make them because with, uh, with these destroyers, they're going to be 3.9 inch destroyers. They're not. Uh, they're going to be following the same line as our frigates um, and corvettes. So they are literally going to be uh, as lightly armed as possible, but they're going to have an incredible amount of torpedoes. So we're going to go side mounted torpedoes on these guys. We're not going to go center line. Um, it, for the express purpose of being able to fit as many torpedoes as possible. The more torpedoes, the better, especially given the fact that, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to be uh, as cordial as possible when it comes to killing our enemies. It's like, we're going to try to kill you as quickly as possible so you, do, you suffer as little as possible <laughs> because our gunnery is, uh, it's uh, much to be desired uh, when it comes down to it. And also, uh, I, I forget who said it. I just saw it this morning, but somebody said 45% chance of flash fire on the battleships. And yes, <laughs> live fast, die gloriously. Um, in, in reality, it's going to take, it's going to take a lot to kill these battleships with the amount of armor and everything that are on these battleships on top of the overall technology that we're going to be able to fit into these as time goes on we're going to be able to reduce that flash fire chance quite a bit it's not like you know oh we are going to never upgrade these like these things are going to be around for fucking forever um the only way we're getting rid of them is if we if they get blown up and i don't with with almost 30 kilometer range guns i don't plan on putting them too close to the enemy <laughs> Like, the secondaries on there are purely for defensive purposes. The main guns are what are there to kill things. And they're going to be sitting back and providing long-range fire support as much as possible. Um, they're there for invasion purposes. They're, that's their main purpose, is that they're meant to set up on an island, take the island, move on to the next one. That's the whole purpose of them. All right, so without building docks, we're actually at minus 11 million, which is actually a really good position for us to be in. Oh, we're... <clears throat> God damn it. I wasn't paying attention to it. Okay, well, we're back at war with, <laughs> with, the, with the Italians. Okay, uh, that's fine, because this means that we go ahead and we deploy the forces. So... Overall displacement of forces. So, uh, four heavy cruisers, four light cruisers, eight torpedo boats here. 
before heavy cruisers for light cruisers, nine torpedo boats. Uh, coming in at about 160,000 tons, we should be able to take a Sardinia with this. And the rest of our forces. So the Type 1 light cruisers are going to be set to Sea Control. And then the Corvettes at Mallorca will be set to Sea Control. And then the Corvettes and Frigates around will be set to Sea Control. Okay, there we go. So this will give us a good amount of torpedo coverage and everything, and we're also making quite a bit more money, so we can go ahead and uh, actually, you know what, we won't queue that up just yet. Um, we're just going to bump up the tech budget for right now, just to, just to get a couple months of that before we, uh, before we shift over to building more dockyard space. So the French are about to take Northwest Italy, which is fine. I'm fine with losing out on that for right now. Um, my goals are down here right now. Like we want to take the, we want to take Sardinia, we want to take Sicily, and we want to take the boot. Um, in regards to Northeast Italy, we can probably actually sneak in and take that pretty easily. So this is going to be this is going to be us pushing in and trying to take stuff as quickly as possible. So let's go ahead and naval invade Sardinia. And then our scout cruisers are going to be coming online relatively soon. But our battleships, we don't have the Navy drills. Uh, we, we need to get naval, Navy drills too in order to be able to accommodate our battleships. So we need to make sure that those get in there as well. So we'll do that. Oh, of course it goes to Obia. Damn it. Of course. Why, why wouldn't it? I guess I could have put it in a center point and actually, you know, not wasted a turn. But it is what it is. It is what it is. So our goal, again, take these provinces here if we can take up here take Ancona then cool if we can't then it is what it is um we'll eventually take it uh no sorry USA um I really don't want to use a shit ton of money and I also don't want to get rid of my unrest uh we're just gonna auto resolve this because I'm not gonna take any damage from that okay so First blood to the Spanish. And no, I will not leave the Spanish alone. Sorry. Uh, okay, single torpedo boat, three transports. I'm pretty sure their transports have guns, but I think we should be fine. This is one of our Type 1 Corvettes, so it's going to be a little, a little dangerous. But if we take a serious hit, and we're able to get out, we'll just run away. But if we can get up on the transports and actually drop some torps into them, we will. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and turn our torps off. And then let's go ahead and act like a screaming Mimi and just run into the enemy. Oh, nice. Okay, great situation for us. We're coming in at a good angle for against the transports, which is good. Uh, so, yes, these bad boys do have guns, so we're going to have to be careful with it. What we're going to do is we're going to scream in, scream out. Uh, we're going to target the Leonardo da Vinci first. All right. Oh, oh gosh, egad. Okay, well. All right, run away. Turn off, of course it dud. Okay, well, finally we got a hit in. Oh, 
Oh my god! Oh no! Oh no! Oh god! They're hurting me! Pain! Suffering! Alright, that- the Leonardo da Vinci should be going down. Oh my god! <laughs> these two inch guns, these two- are uh, 2.8s. Some overshoots got the enemy torpedo boat all right so that first transport's done um i think we will survive long enough at you know eh, that speed though yeah no we're we're gonna disengage okay uh we did we did our duty we came in we sank a transport um we're gonna go ahead and leave <laughs> oh my lord <clears throat> we got the kill, boss. Armed transports. You see, and this this is why it warns you in the in the uh, loading screen tips. This is why it warns you that beware transports when you're using lighter ships, because they will hurt you. They will, in fact, hurt you. <laughs> Which. This is a perfectly fine situation. We get out. We sank a transport. We hurt the Italians. Remember, kids, logistics are the key king of the battlefield. How else is artillery supposed to be able to run the battlefield like it does? Uh, I got people messaging me. What do we got going on here? And just run away. All right, very nice. can invade Sardinia and we are seven months from those one month from those okay cool and then we have 19 inch torpedoes we want to get to 21 inch and the Germans are marching along and it's January 1907 We got a battle, maybe. All right, uh, I'm just gonna auto resolve this. Okay. And then auto resolve. All right, so they are advancing into Northeast Italy, so we're going to miss out on that, but that's fine. Taking this and also uh, 
basically basically the final partition of of italy is underway and you know it is what it is but the germans the germans are having something to say about this and are coming in and stomping all over france so <laughs> it, it, it's not a good time to be a frenchman apparently uh, let's go ahead and reduce this to 75% again, and let's go ahead and do up a year's worth of construction. We are, we are in January. Year's worth of construction. Boom. There we go. Still making a little bit of money. Let's go ahead and up this to 1% so we can maintain the bleed a little bit. We're still making some money, which is good. Set crew. Oh, not enough crew in whoops <laughs> oh no that's problematic <laughs> it's all good it's all good all right uh yeah let's keep on pushing forward Now, again, our main goal is Sardinia and Sicily. If we don't take uh, the boot, then that's fine. Um, the Austrians might get to it before we do. We'll see. But if the Austrians are able to take it, hey, that gives them full control over the Adriatic. Like, that's a perfect position for them. Um, a, lot of people, a lot of people don't realize the easiest way to kill Austria, and this is how we'll kill Austria, is literally to park fleets into the Adriatic and just blockade them and then proceed to just starve them. Like, it is the easiest and quickest way to kill them. Um, you don't have to particularly do anything else. I should have checked how many... Uh, how many transports we're losing. We're not actually losing too many transports, apparently. Uh... Because we didn't, we, we gained on that last turn, so that's good. Unfortunately, uh, due to a lack of long-range escorts, we really don't have the ability to protect trade as well as I'd like. But that's also because we don't have a large number of long-range destroyers or anything. We're about to get naval dr Navy Drills 2, so that's good. So we'll switch off of Naval Drills our naval communications after we get that and then move on to destroyer and then our scout cruisers are almost ready to go let's make sure that they're shifted to defend because i want them to deploy appropriately and we are slowly regaining It'll take us a while to deploy the dreadnoughts, but that's fine. We we have the tonnage to attack other stuff right now. So let's go ahead and keep progressing. Do, 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 do. I might actually use this. Yeah, we'll start a naval invasion of central Italy. Um, so we can just continuously fail it while we're taking the other stuff we want so we can build up our unrest if, if we're able to build up the unrest and be able to switch government types that'd be great Uh, politics, naval invasion, central Italy. Yeah, we'll, we'll just let that fail over and over and over again and eventually be able to uh, build up the unrest we need. Even even with the, uh, the naval sh or the port strikes and everything, we should be able to do it. So. All right, so this can get turned off. Let's start pushing for 1,100 ton destroyers so that we can start working on those and then with these bad boys we're just going to keep doing what we do actually what we can also do move these guys around a little bit so 
So the type one and the Garona. These bad boys can go here. This will add a little extra tonnage while also giving us a capability. Um, as I said before, having ships that are able to move, or heavier ships, I should say, that are able to move with our frigates, our corvettes, our destroyers, etc., etc., be able to pace with them while being able to engage the enemy is going to be a very big help. Because it just means the enemy is just going to be running screaming and flailing and wondering why are we dying. And it's going to be funny to watch. Now once we can get flush deck cruisers, that's just going to be where the money's at. Um, I feel so bad for them. Oh, enemy battleship to sink. Yes. <laughs> because I enjoy sinking the enemy battleships. The enemy decided to present themselves on a silver platter. All right, uh, real quick, heavy cruisers engage, corvettes, frigates, proceed to turn. Uh, cruisers. show off the the new scout cruisers relatively speaking armed to the teeth like these things are absolutely ridiculous these bad boys are going to do a hard turn like so and then these cruisers are going to so remember these are our, our newer light cruisers so these bad boys have the 5.5 inch guns so they're going to be a little more heavily armed oh wait oh they mixed up these formations a little bit damn it okay uh i want you to go you to go here okay you guys need to do the hard turn you guys need to do the standard engagement Screaming Mimi's need to get in here and they need to sink this battleship as quickly as possible.
Ain't no one evading those, bud. Turn torpedoes off so you guys aren't accidentally torpedoing our own guys. Alright, cool. Um, so the enemy transports get to die now. And these, these scout cruisers are armed to the gills with guns. Like, in reality, a lot of people might be like, oh, these aren't that heavily armed. And it's like, dude, the broadside is literally nothing but, like, guns. <laughs> like, it's just guns. And it has a shit ton of torps. Like, it, this is a very well-armed cruiser. <laughs> and there's no escape for these transports against these cruisers. Oh my lord. Oh, what the... The entire back end of that ship just got obliterated by those. Generalissimo approves. Oh my lord. <laughs> Poor Conway. <laughs> they had a battleship escorting them and they're just like, oh, we'll be safe. All of a sudden, just a shit ton of cruisers just start barreling down on their position. Like, we're gonna die, aren't we? <laughs> Like, how do you say surrender in Spanish? Uh, I don't think surrender was it ever an option. All right. Oh, lost a, lost, lost a Corvette there. That's fine. They're kind of, they're kind of meant to be disposable. Uh, what the fuck? Oh, the Austrians. I'm like, what is going on here? I forgot. We, we, we are friends with the Austrians. I forgot. The Austrians are our only friends in this world. Alright. Uh, three more turns on that. The scout cruisers have joined up with their respective groups. So now we're, we're running a 4-6. Which um, is a little... It, it, it's not like terrible logistically, but... Uh, are you taking damage? No? Okay. I I don't like the fact that you're in a minefield right now, so I'm going to move you. <laughs> I just, on principle, I don't like this. All right, so we got a couple turns left on those. Uh, we're nowhere near being able to staff them, but that's fine. Making a little bit of money. Um... So the goals are going to be taking taking what we want and then piecing out. Reason being is because I want war indemnities before Italy collapses. Um, if I can if I can do that, that'd be great. It'd be. Most magnificent, if I could do that. But with effectively 200,000. Um, no, I'm not paying any money for anything. Uh, we're not suffering any trans... Oh! oh. What? We have friend! <laughs> we have a friend! Finally! Holy shit! It just hasn't been freaking 17 years. Holy shit. And we actually got a really good friend, too. Funny enough. 
Um, Belgium is actually probably one of the better ones to get. Uh, the only other one that I'd say is better is uh, the Netherlands. So basically, it goes in order like this. Uh, Belgium, Netherlands, I'll, I'll put them on the same level. And then the Ottomans, the Greeks, uh, then the Scandinavian countries. Korea's pretty good, but Korea can, uh, depending on what game you're in, they either remain free the entire time and just continue buying ships all game and they're great, or they get killed within the first like 20 years and they're just gone. So it's it's a back and forth on that. And then then after that is the South American countries. Now, Argentina seems to be uh on the same level as brazil even though brazil is so much bigger but argentina and brazil tend to buy a shit ton of ships venezuela um i don't think i've ever had venezuela but i i, I would assume they're decent uh colombia is great colombia is also good as well um but yeah mexico mexico is back and forth mexico is either really good or really bad they're basically the same as korea but yeah, no, that's finally we have somebody to buy ships off of. We can we can get rid of all of our old stuff. <laughs> like, hey, we don't need this anymore. Let's sell it to somebody. Oh, there you go. Um, all right. So I love how our armored cruisers are almost the same <laughs> same crew requirements as our battleships. <laughs> It's still better that we have those battleships or those armored cruisers rather than the battleships. Like once we get battle cruisers, we'll swap out to battle cruisers rather than armored cruisers. Heavy cruisers kind of lose their luster once you have battle cruisers, but then they regain their luster in the later game. Especially if you do like a 10 inch, a 10 inch or 11 inch heavy cruiser. That can just absolutely do ridiculous amounts of damage. Like, once you once you have... Like, you can go one or two routes with heavy cruisers. You can either go... If you guys remember the Dmitry Donskoy class from the Russia campaign, where we just had a shit ton of 8-inch guns that just burned everything. Or you can go heavy guns, like 10, 11-inch guns, and they just pop anything that they shoot at without any real problem uh haiti's new leader oh uh no belgium you're not buying my battleship uh do i have the tonnage over here i might i barely have the tonnage but it might be just enough to be able to do it. So let's see. Um, I would love to take more territory. More territory is good. This is this is why you put ships in your colonies, boys. All right. Um, convoy. Auto resolve. We're just auto resolving these torpedo boat versus torpedo boat things. Like we're just not even gonna bother with them. And then ambush. Uh, two heavy cruisers. What are we looking at? Um, ooh. I don't like that. We could easily do it, but I don't like the three point. Like, that's going to be a lot of fucking fire coming at our boys. That's going to be a lot of fire. No, no, no. We're not going for it that that just that i'm scared of that one <laughs> i'm scared of that one it's like mm. not feeling it chief not feeling it now our other goal is is that as soon as we get battle cruisers which we're going to start focusing on cruisers again for a little bit after we get 1100 1100 ton destroyers um once we have our new series of destroyers then we're gonna start playing those out no you cannot buy my boat all right sardinia is ours so that is officially another province for the crown let's go ahead and move on to western sicily and palermo um 
All right, uh, we're making a crap ton of money right now. So let's go ahead and let's actually crank this up to 75%, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, and then, yeah, we literally, we literally just can't use our battle our battleships yet. So yeah, we're only gonna build two of them. Um, we're gonna need lots and lots of time to get those up and running. Uh, we have a 31% chance of gaining this. Kind of sucks, but it's better than no chance. <laughs> When we, when we can, we're going to put the armor cruisers over here. Um, we'll probably go two armor cruisers into our colonial squadrons. And then I'm probably going to put another two. Actually, you know what? Two. Yeah, we have eight armor cruisers. Two, 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 two. Yeah, I think that's how we'll do it. We'll do two in the Philippines, two in the Caribbean. Two in Eritrea, or the Red Sea, basically. And then two in Santa Cruz. Yeah, we'll do it like that. That would give us a good displacement of forces to be able to react to different things. And then, uh, yeah, we're not engaging those heavy cruisers here. I don't, I don't feel like losing ships needlessly. Um, cool, let's... I'll keep it on and hopefully uh we we really need to not be killing enemies right now like that's that's actually kind of a problem we're having is that we're like i think we need to in order to really do this we have to have multiple invasions failing at once in order to get the unrest up because i think we're gain we're we're just getting rid of the unrest too fast unfortunately so uh another another engagement and another slaughter Cool, heavy cruisers in a good location. Uh, let's make sure that you guys are in your own division. Thank you. And you guys can go in that division. Okay. Thank you. You guys do hard turns. And these torpedo boats, they're like in the worst possible position. That's fine. Oh, wow. Lucky hit from the, uh, actually took out one of the guns. Is he going to catch that torp? Nope. Scout cruisers just 
the scout cruiser's just sailing on by like, oh, hi, boys. You get to die. Oh, all those stray torpedoes I didn't see. I don't like that. So you can turn. You look like you might actually hit, get hit by that. The tr the the scout cruisers have, uh, cruisers have already killed the convoy. Like the convoy is basically dead at this point. Okay, well, we're just waiting for them to pepper down this, uh, this armor cruiser. Poor, poor guy just, just eating all the rounds. These cruisers have had terrible torpedo solutions. This is the first one to hit that thing. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Transports are like, hey, we can get away. Wait. Why do those cruisers have Spanish flags? <laughs> Nobody, nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Or in this case, the Spanish Armada. Yeah, all those light gun hits, like, we took so much damage. No, we didn't. <laughs> And then 86% chance, uh, would love, would love, would love to get one of the battleships over here just to make sure we actually take that. Oh my god, <laughs> the Germans, the fucking Germans, bro. They're like, hippity hoppity, this is our property. Oh no. <laughs> Poor 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 freaking oh no i would not want to be now i almost forgot to do this i don't know if being closer to the ports actually makes a difference but drum roll everybody come on come on come on no way me the americans already took the dominican republic let me have haiti <laughs> I'm already going to have to fight the Americans for control of New Spain, so. <laughs> oh, damn. Um, yeah, we're going to withdraw on that. Just because I, just because I don't want to fight it. Okay, okay, so, oh, okay, well, we'll just stick you all in here, I guess, fuck it, <laughs> alright, so we didn't take Haiti, that, that sucks, but it is what it is, just didn't have the available ships, once we're able to get the available ships out there, that'd be better though, uh, okay, so the first battleship is, uh, uh, is deploying, we're actually going to go ahead and we're going to rename this bad boy. There we go. Give it give it a good and proper name. Uh, for those who don't know, the Espana was the uh, was the only class of dreadnought that the Spanish ever built. It 
definitely not the same design that we built because we decided to build a much more universal battleship, but <laughs> hindsight's 2020 and uh yeah. Okay, so that actually gave us 30 unrest from that failure. So, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm just going to keep doing that because three of those even though it takes us a bit to do if we can keep the unrest up by not killing anything and even if we lose like 10 unrest for taking a province maybe just maybe we can actually do this be be nice to see i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna before we finish out this video i'm going to get uh to 1908 See, this was a much th this was a much needed change in uh, change in direction, like just overall. And s France survives. I'm guessing they pieced out with the Germans. Oh my God, France survives in a much more degraded state. But um, yeah, we're gonna just keep withdrawing. We're gonna avoid contact. Oh my God. So, France, are you actually alive? Well, they're fighting the Chinese and the, the Japanese, which it looks like the, the Chinese have taken Laos and they're pushing into Vietnam or Anam. So, the Chinese might be able to push into Guangzhou Wan. Okay, let's, let's see what happens there. So the Chinese might actually be able to secure this entire region, which is impressive. Like, that's actually really impressive on the part of the Chinese. Do, what's the Chinese... Uh, what's their army logistics looking like? 12. Oh, my God. <laughs> but they've got better army logistics than the French right now. So. <laughs> so the French are definitely not too healthy. Um, so for us, we can probably take advantage of this. Um, yeah, we can probably take advantage of this after we take out the Italians or do we No, no, we're going to keep, we're going to keep going the route that we were going. We're going to keep going that route. Um, we're again, we're going to avoid contact with the enemy as much as possible. We're just going to try to farm up the unrest that we need and our battleship is ready. Bethel crews online. So this is actually really good for us. Uh, withdrawal. Thank you. I guess that's the advantage of our cruiser-based army or navy. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and Cadiz. Okay, actually, real quick. So we do have we do have the space. Awesome. Let's send this bad boy over here, the Aspana. Ooh, they, the Hungarians are now marching into central Italy. Which is actually really good for us. Because it gives us the time that we need. So that's actually really handy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um really want war indemnities but if we can't capture southern italy before the austrians take it or take central italy we might just peace out i want the war indemnities Ooh, free alliance with the americans okay i'll take it i will take it Belgium, order other boats. Stop trying to buy my boat. <laughs> That's my boat. Not your boat. My boat. All right, cool. Now we have, we, we definitely have tonnage. We definitely have the tonnage. Oh, my God. There. 
Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm helping them too. Oh, fuck. God damn it. Oh, we're, we're probably going to have to piece this out. Or, or, or we forego the war indemnities and just take the territory. That is, that is a distinct possibility in this. Yeah, well, let's go ahead, proceed. And that should be... should be western sicily under our control very very nice all right so let's go ahead and we need to swing around sicily now to actually invade the other side but this gives us the ability to then station forces in the central uh, mediterranean now because we have access to we'll have access to uh Cathania and uh or Catania and Messena. And then eventually, if we can take this, we can position forces in Bari and Toronto. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and call this one here. I hope you guys have enjoyed so far and we will see you in the next episode. See you guys later.